be not afraid, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will help you. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. They told me I shouldn't be afraid because he was my God. I should not be dismayed because he's with me. He's going to be with me, not just walking beside me, but he was going to help me. He was going to strengthen me. The, the victorious right hand that has never lost a battle was going to be fighting in my corner. We're here with Colin Harrison. He's a Jamaican author whose life experiences have led him to believe in the power of resilience, hope, and faith. He believes even that when life is unpredictable, God is greater than any man and that faith can move mountains. So, Colin, glad to be speaking with you. Likewise, I'm very happy to be here speaking to you, Robert. Yes, and I, I understand that you have some of these incredible stories of just mm -hmm. things that completely changed your life, transformed you, awakened you, these powerful messages that you want to share with us. So can you tell us, before we jump into those stories, just what you're all about, what makes you unique, and why we should pay special close attention to you today? Oh, well, I am a everyday guy, as they say, <laughs> uh, but one who believes in the power of prayer and faith. I believe that God has control in everything that is in the world because he made the world. Therefore, he knows everything about the world. And not only the world, but he made us human beings and um, made us in his likeness. And therefore, if he's made us in his likeness, then I believe that he also has knowledge of every intricate um, detail of our lives. And once I came to that conclusion, then I realized that I can't help but give him the glory and the praise for the things that happens in my life. Good or bad, if it's good, I know that he's working for my good always, because the scripture tells us that that's what he does. Uh, if it is bad, we know that there is another force that is in the world, and that is who we call Satan or the deceiver. And he has always his desire is to discredit God, to make God look like he's not the God of love that he proposed that he is. So Satan will go to any length as uh, um, where God would allow him to go because God doesn't give, give him certain remits in, in, in our life. Um, but he can't kill us. He, he can put things in our way to allow our lives to be taken, but it only happens if God allow him to do so. And if God allow him to do that, then it is because he's working to a bigger picture than you and I can see. And because he, he knows how the, every story is going to end from the beginning, then he knows when he will allow our lives to be taken, if it is going to be taken, uh, as some people call it, prematurely. Um, accident, or these sort of things that comes our way, driving on the road, on the train, buses, the plane, either of these things, uh, uh, the, uh, something can happen because it is man-made. All of these things are man-made, so uh, there, there is no perfection 
in them, but he allowed them to go and flow. But Satan is always hovering, just as he did in the garden with Adam and Eve, and in and, and deceiving them to believe that they wouldn't die, they would live, and they would be like gods. Then the cause of that, we inherit this um, nature that we have, that we sin easily. And um, Satan is always pulling the chain or the, 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 the plug from under us to, to bring us disaster, if you will. But uh, the story that I want to share at uh, this moment is one that looking back at the time when this thing happened, I, I just thought it was just one of those things um, that happens in life. But then, uh, as I stated earlier in another, in another part of the chapter, the book, that Satan uh, knows how and when to attack, and he knows the weak points, he knows all of our weak points, and he, he comes to that area of always. This was that um, I, when I was 14 years old, I was told uh, that I shouldn't go to the river because we have heard of people going to the river and drowning. And I was told that I shouldn't go unless he tells me when to go and who to go with. Unfortunately, I disobeyed and went to a river with uh, some of my peers and some older boys. and. Um, on a Sunday, I remember vividly, it was the Sunday afternoon that we went to the river. And I was just learning to swim at that age. But uh, I was learning to swim, and there were some areas of the river which was very, very deep. We them blue holes because you couldn't see the bottom of those uh, spots. But the boys who lived near the river, they would go and they would just jump in and they would lock that. They'll just you know, play, play in the river and stopping in the middle of that deep hole doing whatever they feel like doing. And um, I couldn't do most of what they were doing. But as I say, I was just learning to swim. So I could jump off the rock face into the river, into the hole, and swim across. I could do that. But I wasn't able to stop and paddle and floats. So um, this Sunday when I went with these um, guys, when we got to the river, as usual, it was a busy um, place uh, because everybody seemed to go there um, just for a little fun uh, leisure time. So I um, was with my friends and I, I jumped off and I swam across and then I thought that was good. I, I did that. I swam across again to the other side, back on the rock, jumped off into the hole, sw did, did that about three or four times. Yeah. I think it was the, about the fifth time 
I jumped off and um, started to do what I had been doing. And two of the older boys, men, they were men, young men, uh, two of them were skylarking in the middle. They were just, they were very good swimmers and were just swimming up and down and um, playfully with each other. And um, when I jumped off, they came right across my bow. <laughs> And I couldn't swim around them. Uh, I had to stop. And the moment I stopped, I began to sing. And I sang for the first time and came up and calling to them. And they thought I was playing. So they didn't pay any mind to me. They didn't pay any attention. Then I went down again, and the same thing when I came up, all I could say, <laughs> and call out a name. In the third time when I came up and I called to my nephew and said, Brent. and I was calling his name, was, his nickname was Blue, so I was calling Blue, but <laughs> it wasn't coming out as that because I didn't have enough time for it to, to come out properly. And that's when they realized that I was in trouble. And they, um, the, the two boys um, grabbed me and um, pulled me out and had to pump me uh, all the water that was in me. And I couldn't tell my father when we got home because that would mean I would get a beating because I disobeyed a command on top of nearly drowning. I would have gotten a beating as well. So he didn't know anything until years later. <laughs> when the subject came up, everybody kept it a secret. And um, looking back, I realized that um, God has a plan for my life. And looking now on the life I've lived, I'm now going to be 69 in uh, the 26th next month. I'll be 69 years old. And um, the things that he has brought me through and enabled me to do, not just myself, but again, marrying um, my wife and um, my um, two sons and uh, my four grandchildren who was here with me today. I wouldn't have had the time to be with them because I wouldn't have had them because I wouldn't have gotten to know my wife and the incredible life that we have lived together as a couple and as a family, and traveling from different uh, countries uh, over that period. And even now, though my wife has suffered the stroke, we still uh, travel. Uh, thank God for that, because he makes the way and uh, he, he's been incredible, uh, the things that he does for us. So, yes, the, the, the story might sound a run of the mill because a lot of people get into those sort of situations. But the fact that I can now recognize that it wasn't just in a story, but God had a purpose for my life. And the purpose was that I should grow up and that I should travel, that I should be of help to um, others. I do prison ministry, uh, which I wouldn't have been able to do if I had died there. I just like, wouldn't be able to testify 
of God's goodness, of his mercy, and the, all of these things that I do. So, yes, I can say that um, God is as as a hand in the things that happens in my life and looking at them as i said before and i didn't think much that that was mine but satan is trying to take me out but god has kept me because he's greater than any force any demonic force and that's why he told us in Matthew um, chapter 10, verse 10, I think it is, that um, he, he, he told his disciples that he was sending them out and he is giving them power over all demonic force, all uh, sickness and diseases. And I have seen that, praying that I'm saying that I'm righteous because I'm not, I am flawed like any man, but uh, I have prayed the prayer of faith and others have felt healing, God healing, uh, prayed prayer for somebody with uh, not just one, more than one person with cancer and uh, the cancer went into remission. I've prayed for healing in certain situations, lives, and they've had the answer to those. So, so God is still good, merciful, and kind, and He remains the same as He was before. Wonderful, and that this is some powerful um, just hindsight to be thinking about that. When you go through your everyday life, you don't think about the significance and you don't think always about the gifts or just mm -hmm. about how just the, that you survive some scary, risky situations. And then that gives you the opportunity to then continue serving. And then it also makes it perhaps less lonely, right? Because you mm -hmm. know that you're, you're not going through life alone and there is some amount of, yeah, yeah there, and there's some like adventure and unpredictability because you don't know when will be your your last day on this earth and it might happen exactly. quickly it might be unexpected but it's all part of a plan that we don't necessarily see so it is wonderful to think about and i think we even said last time when we were working on the book that this sort of conflict makes life interesting right like if you watched a, a movie right. And there, if there was no danger or there was no struggle, no conflict in a movie, it would be a very boring movie. But when very you have boring. To, yeah, but when you have to fight these forces and you mm -hmm. you get scared, you're not sure how you'll get through, then that makes something more action-packed. And, of course, you don't want to have all conflict and all drama, but just mm -hmm. the right amount sprinkled in there is enough for you to strengthen the muscle and then to have these fun stories and messages to then pass on. And so... We said that you um, had some more stories that you weren't able to fit into the book. So maybe we probably have time for one more in the our final like five or 10 minutes of our conversation. So what do you have uh, to kind of, you know, get to the, the end of our discussion here as far as a, a powerful story to really wake us up and make us think? Right. Um, well, Robert and I came to this country in 1979. I thought I was a healthy. 24 year old um, young man. And I yeah, got married um, in that same year and you know, begun to live with my wife. And no sooner than I got here, I never had that condition. I never had the, had the asthma or bronchitis before coming to this country. And when I came and we got married in September the 16th, 29, and three months after the marriage in the flat that we rented at our time, we rented a studio flat. And uh, 
as we were living. And I didn't think that it was um, overly cold. Yes, at that time, Britain was cold during those period, December, January, uh, and those times. So it's very cold. And we, we moved into this flat and we had to move out after um, six months because I developed this cold. And um, when the doctor there told me that bronchial uh, problem. So they uh, started giving me the um, inhalers. Uh, they gave me the first one and was using, but the situation seemed to got, had gotten worse than uh, instead of getting better. And over the next few years, they had to give me two inhaler, one um, as a relief, to use as a release um, each day, but another one, if the attack come, came on, then I would um, use that. So I had a, so one is a blue one, and the one that was a brown one. The, brown, the blue one was the everyday usage. The brown one was the one that I had to use when I had an, an attack and I couldn't breathe. So um, this happened over the next six, seven years ending up in hospital at times, spending a week or less over a week in hospital. I was doing some study and I never seemed to be able to, um, I tried to do um, at the college in Croydon. I was doing um, accounts and law and went through the first year very well passed through that. Then the second year, couldn't finish the second year because asthma was so bad. Was work quite often. And I remember one of the days, it was so bad, I remember, I'm um, 86. It was so bad. Um, I was, my brother, one of my brother was visiting with us from Jamaica and a cousin. They were downstairs with my wife and son. And I was upstairs in the bedroom because I really felt unwell. And while lying there, I got up because I felt so bad lying down. And I got up and I stood on the landing and my son, an older son came up and he, he, he saw me and I felt so bad. I couldn't, if I lay down, it was as if I was dying. And I stood up as if I was dying. And I don't know, I got a little strength, the light jumped in the air. And my son laughed because he thought I was playing. But he ran to his mommy and said, uh, Daddy is jumping in the air. Daddy is. When they came up, they realized how serious it was. So they'd call the ambulance. When they called the ambulance, I came, I spent over a week in the hospital with this uncle situation. They told me that I would have to live with it for the rest of my life. But praise be to God, for the past 20 years, I have used an inhaler. I have not had the need to use an inhaler. The doctors have not told me that the bronchial condition is still uh, there. So right now I am free from all of that. So 
Who could it be? The church prayed for me. My friends prayed for me. And so I didn't just have prayer here, but um, folks in Jamaica was praying for me. Folks in the States was praying for me. And um, folks all, all around the country here prayed for me. And even with the church that I attend at that time, they prayed for me and I been to the church or they visit and prayed with me and for me. And I said today, God be praised, I am a bronco uh, problem free and I am uh, asthmatic, no asthmatic situation in my life anymore. So I'm free. Wonderful. So sometimes those things happen where you just can't explain it other, other than yeah, right. it, it is a, from a supernatural source. And then there's <laughs> nothing else to be done than to be grateful and then focus on the next challenge, the next thing happening right. in life. And so what is the next thing coming up for you? What do you, you have to look forward to that may be a challenge or a struggle, but also rewarding? What's happening with you in the next six to 12 months? Well, I'm hoping in the next six to 12 months to have my website up and uh, um, be able to put this, uh, give something that is uh, needed right now that folks to solve a problem, if you will. Um, I don't know, there's, there's so many problems out there. And every time I might thought I'd nail one that I want to uh, sort of settle on, then something else rear its head. And I am looking and just weighing things up while I'm catching my website up to see. I, I know I have some course that I would like to get out there so our uh, aging course and all the um the um, social media platforms how to use those and uh, teaching folks of the how to actually become competent in using them so the direction and everything already. I just need to get that website and to get out there and to get a um, sales letter and that sort of thing forward. So that's the next challenge that I am going to take. But, but the, uh, the life is good. I, I, um, healthy enough. I, I, I'm a diabetic person at the moment, but it is controlled. And it, life is looking good. I'm looking forward to being 70, if it is the Lord's will, next year. And hope that um, I will be able to go on another cruise with my wife and hopefully my children and grandchildren with me. So, yes, um, and, and continue to uh, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, and letting the world know that he is the same today as he ever was, and that what he has done for me, he can do for anyone, because I'm no special than anybody else. Uh, I'm saved by his grace, his unmerited favor that he has given to me so i am alive and i feel very alive at the moment so yes because he lives i can face tomorrow and face it with confidence not in the abilities uh, the ability that i have to get things for myself but because he gives me that ability and because he 
uh, died so that I might have this. I had to count it as a great privilege that I'm alive right now. I didn't think, Robert, that I would be, uh, that I would have reached 50 because of all the, 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 the things that I've gone through in life and the sicknesses and things. And uh, one of them uh, quickly just had the same. Uh, I was diagnosed as having the church strong's um, symptom, which is another thing that they told me that I would live with in the rest of my life. It could come on in different form, you know, heart attack. It could be a um, different ailment that could come on at any time and take me out for the past, well, I think more than 15 years. You know, and, and one of the doctors have mentioned it. Or when I mention it, or when they ask, when I go to a new doctor, if I go to a new doctor, then they ask me anything. And I tell them that I was told that I have that um, particular um, strain or symptom. And they have not seen it. So I claim victory over that as so. well. Wonderful. Well, there are exciting things to look forward to, and we're all living on borrowed time, it seems. Uh, yes. I am, and you are, and no one is an exception to that. So, And we don't have yesterday or tomorrow. All we have is today, so we should be just so glad that we are yes. alive at least for today and make the most of it and enjoy it and be appreciative of all of those people in our lives. And sure, there can be negativity and stress, but it's best to rise above that because this is a this is a wonderful day because you and I are both alive and living. And so we have been speaking. Oh, yes, yes, we've been speaking with Colin Harrison. And so, if you want to look him up, you can Google him, and that's Colin with two L's. So that's C O L L I N H A R R I S O N. And his email address is Colin five four Harrison at gmail dot com. The book that he is in as a co-author with Pat Masidi is called Dream Big and Act Fast. And then if you want to find his small book with just him in it, that book is called God is Greater Than Any Man. Your faith can move mountains. So you Google search God is Greater Than Any Man and you will find Colin Harrison's book. And when you get that book, you can jump into even more wonderful stories and find out about Colin's origin and some of these other very significant life lessons of his. And so as we're wrapping up our conversation here, Colin, it's always fun to end things on a really powerful note, right? You're a speaker. You, you, you preach things. You know how this is. When you end with a bang, it's way more exciting and interesting than ending with a whimper. So does anything come to mind if I ask you, do you have a favorite moral lesson or quote to share with us, to really just blow the top off our conversation, what comes to mind? Uh, the, the thing that comes to mind, uh, the verse that comes to mind uh, readily always is Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. In the, among a plethora of verses, this one um, stands out because of the situation that I was in. And I thought, oh, hope had gone. And uh, that verse came to me that day in a miraculous way, which would take some time to explain. So I'll leave that for the moment. But that's is, uh, a part of that. Uh, it said, be not afraid, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. For I am your God. I will help you. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And that gave me such a boost. It lifts me from the place where I was because I actually contemplate and suicide. But I, when that verse came to me because of the situation that I had faced, that it came and he told me I shouldn't be afraid because he was my God. I should not be dismayed because he's with me. 
and he's going to be with me, not just walking beside me, but he was going to help me. He was going to strengthen me. And the, the victorious right hand that has never lost a battle was going to be fighting in my corner. That's great news indeed. So yes, that is what I'd like to share with that with us. I agree. That is great news. And to find out more great news and find out what Colin is up to when that website is up and running, we will link to that. But in the meantime, find Colin Harrison, find him on Google, find out his books. And thank you very much, Colin, for showing up and for giving us some amazing, helpful, inspiring stories. I really appreciate you. Thank you, Robert. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to me.